Buy my book! Buy my book! Buy my book! Yama 55 in Sparky's Hero. Story by Cal Billy Willie. With illustrations by C. Willette Wilson. Far away in a place called the Land of Smiles lives a little blue motorcycle named Yama Ha Ha. Thai people say Ha for the number five, so Yama's nickname is Yama 55. When Yama was brand new, nobody wanted him. For two long years, he sat in a warehouse watching horses run in the farm next door. Yama wished so much he could be a horse. One lucky day, Yama was bought by Willie, and Willie was a cowboy. They became best friends right away. Then Willie had a terrible accident. He had to stay in a wheelchair for a long time until he got better. Yama stayed at Willie's side, but sometimes he wished he had someone to play with. Sparky is a frisky young colt who also lives in the Land of Smiles. He's only a few months old, but already he runs and plays every day. Sparky has many friends, and they all love Sparky very much. They try very hard to watch over Sparky and play with him, but every day Sparky can run faster and further. Soon, not even Knock the Bird could keep up with him. Sparky had just too much energy. Mama and Papa are usually either too busy working the farm for Ake, or too tired from work to play with him. There was just nobody Sparky's size to play with. Sparky ran back and forth along the fence day after day, but he was beginning to feel very lonely. It just so happened that Ake's farm was right next door to Willie and Yama's cabin. Sparky didn't know it, but from the time he had first stood on wobbly legs until he was running swiftly along the fence, Yamahaha had been watching him. Yama loved watching the horses so much. He imagined what it would be like to be a horse. So many times when Willie and Yama went for rides, Yama would pretend he was a horse. Sometimes he even believed it himself. Watching Sparky run and jump along the fence was making Yama wish he could be right there running with him. Finally, Yama couldn't stand it anymore. Yama decided it was time to stop watching and do something. One day, Sparky was kicking up his heels. Every day, Sparky tried to invent something new to try, and today it was heel kicking. As he ran along the fence, he would buck and twist and kick up his heels. He had done it so many times today, he was starting to get bored, and then, bang, clank, vroom, clunk. And there, right beside Sparky, was this strange, loud, smelly blue thing on wheels. It was copying every one of Sparky's moves. At first, Sparky was startled, but only for a moment. This is great, Sparky thought. Now I have a friend just like me that I can play with. Sparky had just met Yamahaha. Sparky and Yama were instantly best of friends. Sparky would kick up his back heels, then Yama would lock his front brake so Yama's back wheel would come up. Yama would pull a wheelie, then Sparky would raise up on his hind legs. Each move one of them made was matched by the other. Then Sparky took off running as fast as he could. To his surprise, Yama not only matched his speed, but was overtaking him. Both were wishing so much they could play with no fence between them. Then Yama saw a fallen log near the fence and had an idea. Knock the bird saw where Yama was going and shrieked out, but it was too late. Yamahaha had already jumped the fence and was now frightening all the animals in the barnyard. The pigs and piglets ran one way, chickens and ducks ran another, cows and calves ran another direction. There were only three animals in the whole barnyard not terrified of this loud, clanky, smoky, blue intruder. Sparky was not terrified. He was delighted. He jumped and frolicked with his new friend, but that only served to upset the other animals even more. The other two animals who were not frightened were Sparky's mama and papa. They were angry. Sparky, his father shouted. You and that thing come here at once. Suddenly all the fun stopped. Sparky did as he was told. With his head low, he very slowly approached his father. Yama, his mirrors drooping low, followed behind Sparky. What do you think you're doing, his papa demanded in a strong voice. Sparky's voice was just barely above a whisper. I was just playing with my new friend, Yamahaha. We didn't mean any harm, honest. Firstly, you did great harm. Just look at what you did, his papa said. Indeed, anyone could see the barnyard was a mess. The chickens were squawking, the ducks and pigs were still carrying on. Things were knocked over and everyone was filthy. 
Sparky really felt bad about the mess they'd caused, but it was Papa's next words that broke Sparky's heart. Secondly, Papa continued, you cannot be friends with that thing. It's not a horse. It's a motorcycle. It eats oil. It makes smoke. It's loud, stinky, ugly, and obnoxious, but worst of all, it's different than we are. With that, Papa kicked over some rocks and pieces of wood and made a ramp for Yama to go back over the fence. Now you, he snorted to Yama, get back where you belong and stay away from my son. Don't come back. But Papa, Sparky started to say, not a word, Papa warned. If I ever see him near here again, I'll trample him in little broken pieces of metal and plastic. Sparky tearfully eyed the ramp. Then he had an idea. He'd run away. Gulp the frog saw Sparky look at the ramp. Gulp knew what Sparky was thinking. Papa saw the same thing, and having once been a rebellious little colt himself, he knew exactly what Sparky was thinking, too. As soon as Yama had dropped off the other side of the fence, Papa walked a few steps towards Sparky. Then looking Sparky right in the eyes, Papa sent the ramp flying to pieces with just one powerful kick from his back hooves. Don't get any bright ideas, little hotshot, Papa warned as he walked off. Now Sparky was everything, all at the same time. He was sad. He was confused. He felt helpless. He felt trapped. Nobody understood him. Most of all, he felt angry at his father and more determined than ever to run away. A little later, Sparky stood behind a large, picky new chili bush. Don't get any bright ideas, hot shot, he mumbled, mocking his father. I'll show you a bright idea or two, you, you, you old war horse, he whispered, <laughs> snickering at his clever insult. You think I'm a baby, but I'm big enough to take care of myself and make up my own mind. You'll see. Just then, Sparky heard Ake's wagon. He ducked lower and was silent. He knew that Ake would take his harvest to sell at the afternoon market today. He always did the same thing every three days. Ake would stop to open the gate and drive through, then stop and close the gate. Sparky knew if he was quick and sneaky enough, he could escape while Ake was driving through. That evening, Willie was outside sitting on the porch watching the sun go down. Willie liked sitting outside in the evenings and relaxing. Yama was around the corner of the house feeling very sad. For the first time in his life, he had a friend that loved to run and play the same as he did, and then after only 30 minutes was forbidden to ever see him again. Yama had cleaned most of the mud and dirt off by driving through the high grass, but he still worried Willie might see it if he missed a spot. Just then, Ake stomped up to Willie, and he was very angry. Yama leaned over and tilted his mirror so he could hear what Ake had to say. You've done it, you crazy old fellow, Ake shouted. I've got food pans turned over, broken eggs, upset animals, even chickens on my roof, and your motorcycle tracks all over my barnyard. They lead right back to your house. What have you got to say about this? Willie was taken totally by surprise. I don't know what to tell you, Ake. I have a broken leg and been stuck in this wheelchair for months. I assure you, I couldn't have done it. Ake looked thoughtful. Well, maybe someone took your motorcycle without you knowing, Ake said. Motorcycles don't drive themselves. At this, Yama tried very hard not to laugh out loud in fear Willie or Ake would hear him. Willie, I'm sorry I called you a crazy farang. I wasn't thinking about your leg being broken. I don't think you're crazy. I do wonder why you didn't hear anything going on outside. I was inside all morning and afternoon talking to my friends, the mild chili dog, said Willie. Uh, so you were busy talking to your food while somebody took a joyride on your motorcycle through my barnyard, Ake asked. Yep, nothing crazy about that. Oh, one more thing, Ake said as he started walking back home. I'm missing a baby colt. Somehow it got out. Wolves may get it. Please let me know if you see it. Ake's last words sent a chill through Yama's frame. Oh no, poor Sparky, he thought. As soon as Ake was out of sight and Willie had gone back inside, Yama silently rolled down the hill to the barnyard fence. When he got there, he saw Nock the bird, Gulp the frog, Tukar the lizard, and Sparky's mom. Everyone was very worried. Sparky's papa was tied to the barn and frantically trying to break free. I know I'm not supposed to be here, Yama said, but I must find Sparky and bring him back home. Please help me. I saw his tracks going toward the spooky, said Nock, gesturing toward the rubber tree forest. 
At night there are lots of horrible monsters in there and a terrible guardian. Ake tied Papa to the barn after he tried to jump the fence and go looking for our Sparky, added Sparky's mom. Hearing no more, brave Yama started his engine. Spinning his tire, he headed for the Spookies just as fast as he could go. When little Sparky had entered the forest, it was still daylight. Even so, the thick leaves above made the forest darker. He had traveled a long time. Now it was completely dark. Everything looked the same. Sparky was frightened. He was lost. He wanted to go home. He didn't even care about teaching Papa a lesson now. Sparky started trying to find his way back. He heard things screeching, chirping, and moving all around him in the dark. A few times he saw eyes, then they would disappear into the darkness. Suddenly there was a row of eight eyes looking down at him. Then when he turned to run away, a giant monster with yellow eyes and long arms and big claws, the guardian of the spookies. Sparky's heart pounded as he ran the other way as fast as his legs could go. Yama followed Sparky's tracks. Even though it was dark, he could see well by his headlight. It was clear to him now that many things in the dark are nothing to fear at all once you can see them in the light. It was also clear that poor Sparky was lost. His tracks were going every which way. Finally, Yama came to a row of eight eyes. They turned out to be a family of monkeys when his headlight shined on them. I'm Ling, said the Papa Monkey. Are you looking for a baby horse? Oh, yes, cried Yama. He went that way, said Ling, pointing down a long row of trees. But you'd better hurry up before Lord Canis Lupus and his gang of wolves gets him. Ha <laughs> ha, he thinks calling himself Lord makes him scarier. Yama raced off in the direction Ling had pointed. There were flashes in the sky and rumbling above. A storm was coming. Sparky's tracks were far spaced in a straight line down the row of trees. This told Yama that he was running fast and scared. Thunder rumbled above. From time to time a flash of lightning, then a few drops of rain. The tracks would wash away. Time was short. Yama opened his throttle all the way. He knew it was very dangerous to go so fast in the woods, but his friend was in danger too. Yama then saw a flash of lightning far ahead. On the ridge he saw the sinister outline of things moving around that would be just as terrifying even in the light of day. Wolves. So putting Lord in front of your name makes it scary, huh? said Yama to himself. I think maybe I'll just test that idea. Sparky had run until he was gasping for air and his legs were wobbly. He had to stop. His heart was pounding in his ears, but soon he could hear other things. A broken twig off to his left, then shuffling leaves to his right, a whisper behind him, then growing laughter all around him. Hello, morsel, growled a low voice from behind. So kind of you to bring us dinner in honor of Lord Canis. Um, started Sparky. I'm called Sparky, not Morsel. I guess it's too dark for you to see, but I didn't bring any food with me. I'm really sorry. Oh, that's okay, Morsel, said the voice. You are the food. <laughs> Just then a large clap of thunder boomed overhead, and a bolt of lightning flashed, lighting the entire area. Sparky then saw he was surrounded by wolves on all sides. They were closing in around him. There was no escape. Before the echo of the thunder or the flash of lightning had faded, all was suddenly very bright again, and a new boom sounded above Sparky and the wolves. I am the great Lord Yamahaha, the destroyer of wolves, revved Yama from over their heads in his deepest, loudest voice ever, his light blinding. It actually seemed as if Yamahaha had appeared right out of the thunder and lightning itself. A hard rain started at just that very instant as well. Yama's entrance was so terrifying, so impressive, that for just a second Sparky even forgot about the hungry wolves. But Yama didn't leave it at that. As soon as his wheels hit the dirt, he started doing circles around Sparky, throwing leaves, dust, mud, sticks, and rocks all over his attackers. Sparky stood in the center of a tornado created by Yama's back wheel. Sparky was so happy to see his friend. With new energy, he kicked up his heels in the circle of safety his friend had created. Lord Canis and his pack were now scattering in all directions. Never had the wolves seen anything like this. Yama was revving his engine, booming backfires from his tailpipe, flashing his high beams, and blowing his horn, all the while spinning up a moving wall of dust, mud, and debris around his friend. Nobody was going to lay tooth or claw on Yama's friend Sparky. Only when all the wolves were far out of sight did Yama stop circling. 
Just then, oddly, the rain stopped too. Let's go home, said Yama. I can't go fast, said Sparky. My legs are tired from running. I'm low on gasoline, so I can't go fast either, replied Yama. But it's not so far. My light will show the way. Sparky wasn't afraid going through the forest this time. While it was true the wolves were a real danger, just about everything else was imagined. It seemed like every time Sparky saw something scary, it was something else when Yama's light hit it. But Sparky still had a few questions. What about the giant with eight eyes, Sparky asked, and that terrible guardian of the spookies? Just look for yourself, Yama said as they made a turn in the trees. There in Yama's light on one side was the Ling family, and on the other, a hollow tree with a mama owl nesting in the top. Wow, said Sparky, what a cute family of monkeys. They told me where to find you, said Yama. They saved your life. It wasn't just the monkeys saved you, Yama continued. It was Nok, Gop, Tukar, and your mama. Even Piswa, the butterfly, was worried. Poor Ake was almost trampled by your papa. He had to tie your papa to the barn. I won't be surprised if the barn is in pieces when we get back. It was you who came after me, Yama, Sparky said, and then sadly, and you, Papa, wants to trample. Well, I guess if he does, Willie and the mild dogs will just have to put me back together again, Yama said. I got no regrets. Yama and Sparky finally reached the edge of the rubber forest. Behind them, the sun was rising. They'd been out all night long. Everything looks so different in the light, said Sparky. Yes, but it's the same, dark or light, said Yama. You let your own imagination create horrible monsters where there was no danger at all. Then I panicked and ran right into real danger, Sparky added. Luckily, I have a true friend to come help me out when I need it the most. Yep, said Yama. Looks like you learned something useful from all of this. I have a feeling we're both about to get taught another lesson, said Sparky. The farm was directly ahead. They could see Ake, Willie, and Sparky's parents at the fence. They seemed to be arguing. Nock was first to see them coming and flew out happily to greet them. Thank goodness you're both okay, she said. Willie and Ake are blaming each other for both of you being gone. When Yama and Sparky arrived, they saw a puzzling sight. Everyone, even Sparky's papa, had tears in their eyes. Sparky's mom was crying openly. All of their faces were either angry or sad. Then joyful. Then all of them angry. Just look at you, said Papa and Willie in a chorus to Sparky and Yama. Just where have you been? Sparky and Yama truthfully told all about their adventure. They both knew they had done wrong, and so they knew punishment was coming and justified. Ake, Willie, and Sparky's parents talked and decided that Papa had been wrong to judge Yama. In fact, Mama noted, only Yama could have saved Sparky, and if Papa had gone, she likely would have lost them both. Yama being so different is what saved their son. Nobody else could have dealt with Lord Canis and his pack the way Yama did. In the end, it was decided that Sparky would stay in the barn and Yama on Willie's porch for one week. It was a fair punishment considering all they'd done. Since they had told the truth, it was only for one week instead of a month. The week seemed like forever. During that time, Willie bought a new cargo box and mirrors for Yama and cleaned him up. Every day of Sparky's punishment was a sad day for Mama and Papa, too. It's always very important to teach one responsibility for one's mistakes, but truthfully, no loving parent enjoys it. Just as the sun came up on the eighth day, Ake come out and untied Sparky. He was used to talking horses and motorcycles that drove themselves now. Congratulations, you'll have breakfast next door today, little Sparky, Ake said. It was true. All day long, Yama and Sparky ran around and frolicked at Willie's place. Ake got to try some of Willie's chili with spaghetti on Willie's snack table. There was also a special snack table for Yama and Sparky. It had oats, water, and gasoline for Yama. It was a happy day for everyone. Now was a happy time. Mama and Papa accepted and loved Yama after what he did. They now love Yama like another son, Sparky's big blue brother looking after him, Sparky's hero. And that's the end for now. Buy my book! Buy my book! Buy my book!